understand a little bit more how the body works. Um, how many of you in here believe that emotions affect our health? Mm -hmm. Just about everybody. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you look at the last year and a half and the stress that people were under, at least that some people were under more stress than others, but what did that do to people? It really messed with them, didn't it? Yeah, it, our emotions affect us a lot. And so we're going to show you, we're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. Then I have two guests here tonight sitting right there in the back that deal with emotions a lot. And they're going to come up, and, and uh, I'm going to do a couple quick demonstrations, and then they're, Carrie is going to do, uh, she, she does, Dr. York, who's sitting by the door, does primarily emotional work in her office. That's all, she, most of what she does. So she's going to uh, do some demonstrations on how you can actually release trapped emotions from the body that, that can affect our health. I do a little bit of that here, but I don't do as much as she does. So... We're going to start out by talking about D.D. Palmer, the discoverer of chiropractic. And he recognized that um, emotions really affected disease. Now, he, was, he discovered chiropractic in 1895, and he stated that there were three causes of subluxation, basically three causes of disease, trauma, toxicity, and thoughts. Okay, basic, uh, uh, th these are the basic issues of all disease. And so, even back in 1895, he was talking about toxicity. Now, how much toxicity was there in 1895 compared to where there is now? Yeah. Not very much, okay? But he even recognized it back then, okay? And so, for sometimes, for reasons we don't understand, we don't process certain emotions completely, and they tend to get trapped in our body. They, they tend to just stay, stay in certain places. And instead of moving beyond, you know, an angry moment or depression, um, negative energy and negative emotions can stay in our body and cause significant stress. Um, now... Trapped emotions have a very well-defined energy, and they have shape, and it has form. And most people are amazed to find that emotional baggage is actually more real than they imagine. Now, if I were to ask you guys, how many of you believe that, mm -hmm. that there is such a thing as emotional baggage that people mm -hmm. carry around? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does it affect us? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do, do probably all of us have some emotional baggage? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of us do. I don't think there's anybody that doesn't, okay? And so um, so a lot of people, they, they get pulled down by their past. I mean, probably all of us are to a certain degree, and they don't know how to get over it. Uh, and so trapped emotions can cause you to do lots of things, to make wrong assumptions, to overreact to innocent remarks. Anybody ever, ever been around somebody that did that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you go, wait, what did I just say? Like, you know, yeah. I mean, maybe I should ask if anybody's ever been married. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that would be the, the right We're question. Yeah. You know? uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, it short circuits relationships. You see this, these, you see people that can never hang on to a relationship. I mean, they just go round and round and round. You know, it's a new person every year. You know, they, and, and a lot of that is because of issues that they've dealt, that they, they've never really dealt with that are just, sti you know, sticking around in their system. Um, trapped emotions tend to create depression, anxiety, and other feelings that are hard to shape. Um, they interfere with the functioning of your body's organs. Mm -hmm. We're going to really get into that here in a little bit. And um, they keep you from living a, a healthy life. So uh, what causes trapped emotions? Well, loss of a loved one could. Divorce, mm -hmm. you know, painful divorce. How many of us have seen that? They never, they never can get past it. Financial hardship, home or work stress. I mean, both my parents grew up in very, very stressful situations, you know, and, and they were aware of that, 
but it was really hard for them to get beyond that. I mean, uh, like for example, if, if you've ever known somebody or even had a father who was a, you know, an angry alcoholic, you know, that can cause a lot of trap, a lot of emotional issues that are hard to get, get past. Mm -hmm. Miscarriage or abortion, uh, physical trauma, physical or emotional combat, um, physical, verbal, mental, or sexual abuse, negative beliefs about yourselves or others, long-term stress, rejection, feelings of inferiority, and neglect or abandonment. And this is something we see in, in, in that syndrome where babies are not touched when they're little, and they have tremendous emotional um, relational problems when they get older. So Reiki Hamer was a German physician mm. who discovered exactly how emotional trauma affects our health. And this happened to him in the, I think it was the late 70s, early 80s, where he, he had a son who went to Italy and he was, his son was, was murdered in Italy. And so Dr. Hamer, six months later, developed testicular cancer. And he goes, wait a minute, I've never, I've never been sick, and all of a sudden I've got cancer. There must be some relationship between the loss, the grief, and the loss of his son, and the cancer he got. That's what he, he now, he's the kind of guy that, that you know. Some of us, and we all tend to do this. We trip over the truth, and then instead of realizing that, we just walk on. Well, he didn't do that. I mean, he realized that there was some connection between the loss of his son and the development of cancer. And what he found is he went back, he looked at all of his patients who had cancer, he looked at their MRIs, he looked at their histories, and what he found is that all cancer starts with an emotional shock, which is unresolved. Depending on the emotion, a very specific area of the brain is involved. And with every specific emotion, it's always the same place in the brain depending on the type of cancer. And he found there's also a 100% correlation between a dark spot in the brain that he would see on an MRI and the location of the cancer in the body and the very specific type of cancer. So he was able to put all of these things together and he had great success in treating cancer through emotions, through resolving these emotions. And so uh, what do you think happened to him in terms of his standing in the medical community in Germany. Anybody, anybody want to make a guess? Probably tanked. <laughs> they, they pulled his license. Yeah, he lost his license for a while because this was so cutting edge. It was so, uh, and, and he was getting such good results that they said, what you're doing is in medicine. So he, for a while, he lost his license. So some of his emotion organ relationships were this cancer of the left breast is conflict involving a child, home, or mother. Cancer of the right breast involves conflict involving partners or others. Liver is starvation of love. Okay, liver can also be uh, anger or resentment. Uh, pancreas, unresolved family issues. So, you know, remember Steve Jokes? You know, he had mm -hmm. cancer of the pancreas. I mean, have you ever read anything much about him? But he had some major unresolved family issues. I mean, he had a, he had a, a daughter that he, he would not even admit that was his daughter for, for most of his life. I mean, mm. and it, it just fits so well with, with, his, uh, uh, with his history. Stomach and small intestine, indigestible anger, a thyroid cancer, feeling powerless, large intestine, deceit or betrayal, kidneys, abandonment, gallbladder bitterness or resentment, ovaries and testicles lost by death or leaving. And he found out this is very, very consistent uh, with, with the kind of problems that his patients had. So our subconscious mind is a storage area, the archive for everything that we've ever experienced. And, and we're also, it's also where, what our body needs to get well. So our conscious mind is this little bit of iceberg above the water. Our subconscious mind 
uh, is it's part below the surface, which is an accumulation of everything we've ever experienced. And so trapped emotions are made up of energy, just as energy makes up our bodies and everything in the universe. And so, you know, if you break down anything to its, its atomic forms, an atom is primarily energy, okay? So trapped emotions are energy, just like the things that make us up. Now, um, trapped emotions can remain in the body for years, they can accumulate, and, they're, and they can constantly cause issues. Uh, every feeling, every thought, every emotion we experience can send a message to each cell in our body. Some messages are intense. Some messages, you know, leave and they don't make a, 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 a they don't make an impact. But some are intense and more deeply seated than others. And I bet I, if I went around, I could, I could. Each one of us would have some sort of experience, good or bad, that affected us really deeply, and that like, like, we've never forgotten, and that just bubbles up every now and then, you know? And that's what we're talking about. Um, so resolving deep-seated emotional conflicts helps us to think and feel the same thing. And I'm gonna do a little demonstration on that here in just a minute. So when we feel one thing but think another thing, we're in conflict. And for example, you've probably heard this, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. So where, does, where did these two things come from? The Bible. The Bible. Bible, right. So remember the book that this comes from? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways? James. James, that's right. Yeah, I knew you'd know. Okay. <laughs> As a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. Where does that come from? Proverbs, right? Yeah. So even the Bible says that that if you're double-minded, or, or or how you think in your heart, so you are. So this is a this is part of the issue. So if somebody grows up in poverty, and that's how they're programmed to think. It's really hard for them to get out of that unless they're able to let that go. Okay? And that's where, you know, if you think, if you believe that you're supposed to be poor, you got to do something to get that out of your, your, your the way you think. Otherwise, you're going to be poor. And so, one of the things that these, some of these emotional techniques that, that Dr. Carey is going to show you and that I'm going to, I'm going to show you is that are, are ways that we can change this, and, and I do it in relationship to health, because sometimes you might have a, a health issue where there's an emotional issue connected to that problem, and we have to have a way of resolving that. So when we feel one thing, and we think the same one thing, we are functioning with our whole brain. Um, a Christian leader said once said these words. He said, God works on a person from the inside out. The world works on a person from the outside in. The world would take people out of the slums, but God takes the slums out of people, and they take themselves out of the slums. The world would mold men by changing their environment. God changes men who then change their environment. So when we release trapped emotions, we allow people to change from the inside out. So I'm going to do a demonstration. I want everybody to stand up, okay? Okay. Now, close your eyes, and I want you to think of something really positive in your life. Now, what do you feel? What do you, how do you, where do you feel your body moving right now? Forward. Yeah. Yeah. So, when your body tends to, when we think of positive things, it tends to propel us forward. Now, think of something really negative. What do you feel now? Falling backwards. Yeah, you're falling backwards. Okay? So, negative things keep us trapped. Positive things keep us moving forward, okay? So, go ahead and sit down. Did anybody not feel that? 
Okay. Now, I need a I need a volunteer. Okay. Darling, come on up. Okay. So. <laughs> I'll try. I'll okay. Try. All right. Hold your arm up. Resist me. Okay. Let me just touch here. Resist. Okay. That this means she's testable. Now, um, I want you to say, uh, my name is Darlene Moore. My name is Darlene Moore. Okay. See how strong she is? Okay. Say, I'm a woman. I'm a woman. Okay, now I want you to say, I'm a 747 pilot. I'm a 747 pilot. See how weak that makes her? <laughs> See, because the way she thinks, her brain and her body, her, her subconscious mind knows that she's not a 747 pilot. So she can't say that and believe that in good faith. Now, if my brother, my younger brother was here, who was an airline pilot, he could say that and he'd be strong as a rock, okay? Um, let's do, do, do another one. Uh, say, I have grandchildren that I really love. I have grandchildren that I really love. Yeah, no doubt about that, okay? <laughs> so so your, our subconscious mind actually affects our body. It affects strength. It affects everything that we do. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to have Carrie come up, and um, I'll, give, I'll just give the show over to you. <laughs> okay. So the tech, there's a lot of different techniques that we can utilize to release trapped in the negative emotions. And the one that I usually use in my office is called neuroemotional technique. And it can be used by chiropractors. It can be used by any kind of mind or body worker. So they've opened it up to um, psychologists and, and mental health therapists and massage therapists. It just depends. Um, it's pretty much anybody that has a title mind or body worker. And we use muscle testing just like with which, and I'm a chiropractor by the way, and that's what I do. And I work right upstairs. And um, we use muscle testing um, just like what Paul did. So I think, would you just want me to do a demonstration? Yeah, show, just to, or, yeah, just okay. do a demonstration. I'm, okay. I'm just find a volunteer and show them how you do it. Okay, so, um, and neuromotional technique is something that was developed by Dr. Scott Walker, who's from uh, California, he's been around. I think he started teaching classes in about 1988. And much like what Paul was talking about, um, he addresses the structural, physical, and emotional aspects of how we do this. Um, I also practice applied kinesiology, which goes into that a little bit further, but neuroemotional technique is what I utilize for the emotional aspect. Um, but I can, does somebody want to volunteer for me? So I can show, it, and also what I want you to let, let you know is that when we're doing the muscle testing and if something comes up when I'm doing the demonstration that you're not comfortable sharing, we could just stop and choose it and move on if that's because I don't want anybody to feel like they're exposing their big, deep, dark secrets. Is there anybody who wants to? I'll do it if no one else does, but if someone else wants to. You want to go? Sure, go ahead. I wanted to, but that's okay. okay. No, Carmen, you go. Go ahead. Because okay. <laughs> I was like, nobody say anything, so yeah. I will. The yes. three women so in the There's two different ways. <laughs> well, it's easier, honestly, I was hoping a woman would volunteer. <laughs> Just because I'm short, and it's hard if I'm going to do a muscle. <laughs> so perfect, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. So there's different ways to access this. You can do a mind a mind entry or a body entry. So a mind entry would be like a statement, like what you said, and if it's not congruent with what your body says, you go weak. Everything that we do is an, is, um, an auditory stimulus with a motor response. So it's not like we're asking the universe or, ad, or saying, you know, yes or no or anything like that. We're actually, your body's hearing an auditory stimulus and your body's react, your nervous system is either facilitating or inhibiting the muscle, okay? Mm -hmm. And so do you have an area that bothers you? Like, do you get tension up here? Do you have... Because um, I think we're going to do a body entry so that I can demonstrate that. It's mostly, like, the shoulder okay. over here. Okay. Yeah. So we'll find a weak or um, in inhibited muscle. I'm going to hold straight. Okay. And touch the hand towards your body. You see, she can't hold that. So, you know when we're upset, everybody does... does innately does this and they kind of hold their head and then they 
do this and move on. That's because there's actually vascular points right here that when we hold those, it helps to, to stimulate blood to come to the forebrain so that we can process the emotion. So we utilize, in, in the example that I'm gonna do today, there's lots of different ways to release it, um, but we're gonna do a release using some acupuncture pulse points so that we can couple the different organ systems that are represented by these points with the vascular point on your forehead to release it, to release the emotion, okay? So we're gonna check and make sure this is an emotional issue. And I'm gonna have you put your hand on your forehead and hold your arm straight and hold it in. And that's not, it's something else. So let's find a different, let's find a different muscle, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay, so hold this one. Push it across that way. Okay, now put that on your forehead. Push it across. There we go. Is it closed? Okay. We didn't practice it. I'm emotionally so fine. That was strange. Okay, now put the other hand on your forehead. Push it. No. <laughs> okay. Push it. No, practice. Okay. Push it across. Okay, now put your hand on your forehead. Push it across. I'm sorry to be in front of the camera. Push it across. Maybe you are emotionally fine. Maybe mm -hmm. I am. Maybe I just don't think I am. Push up. Push up. Now put your hand forward. There you go. There's one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, there are... Let me move over here. Is that okay? There are two categories. One is money. It means money. Money is money, job, career, finance, material things. Hopefully it's not going to be your job. <laughs> Her <laughs> boss. <laughs> okay, so there's different categories. We have love and money. And so how did you find which, explain how you determine that, those two categories? Which categories? Yeah. I don't, how do I determine which Yeah, how did you is? determine that? Okay, so I'm just going to say the category. Oh, gotcha. And then her muscles gotcha, either yeah. going to be weak or strong. So... So the main, is, these are the main issues that in life that mm -hmm. we deal with. Yep, money and love, and then your different roles in life, like whether you're a father, a mother, or an employee, right. boss. Okay, so we're going to check these different categories. So money, job, career, finance, material things. Loves everyone you love, everyone loves you. And then there's you in your roles. Okay, so it's your money, push up money, job. Career, finances. Okay, does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then what we're gonna do is find, so we can either do different points on the body to find this or we can use your um, different pulse points. I'm gonna do the points on the body because it's easier for you guys just to correlate it with a different organ, okay? So, finances. Okay, and then I'm gonna find an emotion that goes with that. I know my muscles are sometimes harder than Dr. Paul's. <laughs> if your arm gets tired, let me know. Okay, so this is a lung point, and there are different emotions that go with lungs. There's um, grief, sadness, yearning, cloudy thinking, anguish, crying, compelled to neatness, or being dogmatically positioned. So we're going to see which one of those emotions correlates with the so, with regard to finances, there's grief, sadness, yearning, sadness, kind of thinking, yearning. And so then when we find that, we ask if you're willing to share what, what is your yearning with regard to finances? What do you wish for? I had enough to live on my own. And then what I want to let you know is this is really normal because we hit the right thing mm -hmm. and it creates that physiological, sorry, you need to clean up. It creates that physiologic response that Dr. Paul was talking about. And so you really can't control what comes, wells up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we know we're on the right track, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Are you comfortable? Yeah. Okay. So, so yearning, yearning to be able to have enough money to live on your own. Yep. 
So then we check for a concept of an original event where there was a yearning to be able to do something on your own. Because most of the time, I mean, occasionally it's something that's just current, but like we were when you were talking about having being stuck in the way you think and not being congruent with things, and so you can't move forward in your life, most of the time that happens from an earlier trauma or emotional event that occurred. So we're gonna count back in, in age and see at what age something similar that she's globalized to to this emotion um, that, she, that you experienced, okay? Okay, we we'll look at something in an earlier age that caused you to feel stuck in this situation, okay? You guys will never come in and look at me the same way again. You <laughs> <laughs> wanted up here no, so bad, no, no. I know. It's like, sure. <laughs> It's okay. Actually, it might be really different. It actually. might be. <laughs> well, every single one of us has something that would yeah. come up yes. like this, so mm -hmm. you don't need to feel uncomfortable. Okay. Okay, so concept of an original event where there's yearning to be able to do something on your own. Yep. Conception of time. Mm -hmm. 10 to 20. 20 to 30. 20 to 25. 25 mm -hmm. to 30. 25. 15 to 6. When you think of age 25, yearning. Married with two kids. Okay. Something to do with being married. Very yearning to be married. I mean, you don't have to share um, if you can. And I didn't want to be. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're going to be able to raise these two kids on your own. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. You ready to get clear down emotionally? Yep. Okay. So, I'm just going to put your hand on your forehead, and this is the acupuncture plane that I want you to hold. Do you need a chair? Mm -hmm. Hold your phone. And this is at that point. You take a few deep breaths right into here. We're just going to see if there's any more emotions at 25, which most likely there are. Are you okay? Yep. Keep going. Okay. So, mm -hmm. other emotions at age 25 with, re with regard to being married and wanting to raise these kids on your own. Mm -hmm. um, there's, let's see, other emotions. Okay, anger, resentment. Resentment is like on Dr. Paul's chart, and it has to do with the gallbladder. So you use gallbladder. Um, meridian point. Meridian point, point yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're doing this a little different than what I, I learned it. It's really interesting. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully I'm doing it this <laughs> the way they technically want you to. I've been okay. doing it so long. I so you don't, do, you don't adjust the vertebra then with the activator. You can do it both ways. Okay. Yeah. I guess this is just the way that this is. This is the way I do it all the time, and since I can do it without thinking, since I have a little head injury a couple weeks ago, so I'm just yeah. doing it all the time. <laughs> I don't have all the points memorized on the back to tap. So, um, you're doing okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So the nice thing about these kinds of techniques is you don't have to relive the whole event and talk it out, because the thing that I don't like about that is that when you talk about it and you re-experience it, it actually changes your physiology again. And I'm not saying that talk therapy is not helpful. I think it is. And it does help get you to get congruent with your thoughts. But this changes the physiology of what's going on and releases it instead of making you bring that physiology to, um, to the surface and not give you a way to release it or get rid of it. Okay, doing that? Mm -hmm. okay. Other emotions? 
past age 25. Other nations age 25. Good. Okay. That's basically how, how that release occurs. Now, wasn't this one the original one that was weak? Yeah, that one. That should be strong, now, shouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Much stronger. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Stronger. Very good. Good. Okay. Thank you for volunteering. You're welcome. Yeah. Yay. Good, good job, Carmen. Now, Glenda does another another technique called the emotion code, which is a little different than this. Do you want to, Glenda, do you want to just mention? Yeah, I'd like to say something. Uh, like with for what I do, I cannot do the NET. I'm not trained in that area. But I know in just feeling her energy, that Carmen does not believe that she is worthy of making enough to live on her own. She has an I am unworthy belief. When most of us have this, my, my part in this would be to find the source of this unworthy belief and remove it. And then she will naturally, her, her energy that she puts out will change to where uh, life will just be easier. She'll be the person in line that gets up. 13 ears of corn in her bag instead of 11, just little things like that. But most of the time we have a belief, I'm unworthy, I don't deserve, um, I'm shameful. I often find, oddly enough, that many of these beliefs come from potty training. Mom goes, shame on you, I can't believe you did that. And this little one or two year old goes, I'm bad, I'm unworthy, I'm shameful. And so my part is just to release those memories and emotions. Good, awesome. So that's where it all came from, Mormon body. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, you call oh, you <laughs> There's one other thing that happens quite often, and when you were in utero, if your mother had a feeling of unworthy or shame or a shock, you actually, the child, absorbs those energies and they have that to be cleared. Sense. Wow. Because and that's that one of the reasons sense. many times you'll see mm -hmm. the same energies in a family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Uh, any questions? Okay, so all this is is trying to get our brains, the way we think, <clears throat> congruent with how we feel. That's all we're doing here. It's getting so we're not double-minded so we're not wanting to do one thing but we think subconsciously another thing that constantly sabotages us so all this is all about getting our subconscious mind congruent with what we want with what we how we feel what we what we want to believe about ourselves and so Scott Walker out in California, uh, he's a chiropractor, developed this, and, he, and like Carrie said, he started teaching it about 1988. And um, uh, I know that Carrie, that's all Carrie does, but I know she's, you're booked up for what, three months or something like that? Or, yeah, so she's, she's, uh, uh, she's booked up quite a, quite a ways in advance. But uh, so that's how from a chiropractic standpoint, we deal with emotions and problems in the body. As, as Carrie showed, you can deal with a lot more than just physical issues. Uh, anybody else? Any other questions? I have a question. If somebody's suicidal, is there a way to get at what is causing them to feel shame or the emotions that are behind that? Sure. If, but you, you, know, you have to get them out of that. I know, if they're acute, you, you can. If they're acute, you have to you have to get them to the point where they're able to do that. But yeah, I'm sure you've worked with people like that, have not you? Sure. I have. I mean, in conjunction with psychologists or you know, mm -hmm. therapists. Because that's one area um, in my life so I've always been bothered by suicide. Why people do that? How can they do that? I remember having a couple of friends that committed suicide. I've had. A tennis partner that committed suicide I had a cousin out in Iowa. He wasn't, he was married to my cousin, but he hung himself in the garage. And then she comes, the wife, my cousin Glenda, comes into the garage and finds him. And it was like, uh, you did this, you know, kind of a thing. And she took a lot of guilt 
from that. And I had to really counsel her long distance over the phone for well, an hour and a half one Saturday because she called and she called at the place I was at and she got a hold of me. No, I think that it's, yeah, it is possible to get to the root issue mm -hmm. of that. I mean, exactly. sometimes that's a chemical. It's just like chemical chiropractic issue too. Root. Mm -hmm. Not just yeah. emotional. And it, it could be a spiritual issue. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very that's much. It's all caused spiritual issue. Absolutely. Yeah. And then when you have gone through all of the, you know, how do you call it? The, the sessions? Yes. <laughs> you know, because like, how do you guard your heart? Like the Bible says, you know, when you've gone through, you come to the Lord, that to guard your heart, to guard your emotions so you don't go back there again. Right. Well, one of, um, I utilize some other, I mean, I just did a very simplistic mm -hmm. example. Um, but yeah, especially with like patients that are believers, mm -hmm. I do a lot of things where we replace the negative emotion mm -hmm. with a spiritual truth. Mm -hmm. um, also, one of the, the one of the things I often recommend for people who are more self uh, will take the initiative and are more uh, want to do more outside of the office. Yeah. Caroline Lee is an excellent. I don't know if you know about. Oh her. yeah, I've read her book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. she's a Christian neurologist, and she has a, even a is it it's a twenty one day det brain detox mm -hmm. program. It's really mm -hmm. inexpensive things like nineteen dollars. Um, a year and it she helps you go through and um, pray through what your false beliefs are mm -hmm. and replace them with biblical truths mm -hmm. um, so there there are lots of different tools yeah. out there for helping guard your heart after but yeah it, you're right you don't want to just empty out the negativity and not put in the truth yeah mm -hmm. at least avoid doing it yeah yes okay okay thank you so much everybody for being here hope you got yes. something out yes. of this mm -hmm. and